Hello, well you join me um, at, I think this place is called Crowley Point. I really should have checked that before I started recording uh, a video, but uh, nonetheless, I've got to be really quick here because uh, we are chasing uh, the sunset tonight. I've got my camera set up. It's sat right above me right now because uh, I wanted it low down, but I didn't want to stand up in the video and th uh, things like this happen to me all the time. Anyway, uh, settings wise, um, I'm on um, F8, which I always do. Uh, my ISO is 160, uh, which is the base ISO of the camera, so I'm quite happy with that. I could, I don't think I'm going to get it anything lower than 160, but that's not a bad thing, because you'll, and you'll see why in a, in a second. We have got this absolutely amazing uh, sky at the moment. This is overlooking Gloucester, so over there you can see the Slimbridge Wetland Centre. There's, uh, let's see, there's uh, the um, Malvern Hills over there, there's uh, May Hill is somewhere along there, there's a, a, a monument somewhere over there as well. It's a really, really great uh, uh, place to come uh, and take a picture, and we have got this glow at the moment. Uh, we are time-wise, we are at um, uh, 20 to 8, and the sunset's meant to be at 8 tonight. Uh, so there's still a bit of time to go. I want to make, it, make sure I've got a panorama of this because it just looks fantastic. I'm bracketing all of these shots, and I've got my bracket is set to um, nine exposures over two stops. And I found that seems to be the best way of getting the majority of stuff that I want to get from it. That's, that's why we're doing it like that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take these photos right now. Uh, and I'll start off over here. Now, I've focused on everything. I know my camera is above the, um, uh, the, the poles here. Uh, and so it's just a case. Uh, I've also got it on the two-second timer as well, of course, so that I make sure that I get everything that I want. Um, and we'll just turn this around a little bit. And just keep going around with this until we actually get a, 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 a final image. Now, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to end up producing this. Uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to end up bracketing it at all when I come into, into Lightroom. Because uh, a couple of times recently, uh, I've actually found that you can... Uh, you can just load in, you know, one of the pictures and it's perfectly fine. It all depends on where the light is. Um, I think... Yeah, we're, ju we're just about out of there now, so that's about it. So that is my first shot of the night. The second one is going to be in the same position, only slightly lower down. Okay, so that first picture was a, a little bit... Um, a little bit rushed because I literally got here and the sky was where it was and I want, really wanted to make sure that I didn't lose that picture. Well, here I am with the camera set up a little bit differently. Uh, and let me just take you through the composition that I've got here because we're doing a portrait shot now. Uh, we're going to get all of those colours again, all of those golden colours, but we're really focusing on uh, the hills in the background. So if you can see up, now you probably can't, uh, see up here somewhere, uh, you can actually see the, uh, the hills, uh, but down Below that, we've got all of, uh, well, we've got Gloucestershire, and then we've got the, uh, the, the wetlands in front of it as well. So it uh, should be an interesting picture. Lots of colours uh, in the top as well. We're bracketing again. We've got the same uh, settings as we had before, because that seems to work. Uh, so I'm going to take that picture, and we'll see what that's like when, uh, when we get back into the computer. Well, that was the first two shots for the night, and I'll save that first shot for later. What we're looking at now is the image that you've just seen taken. What's really important in these types of shots is to understand what the subject of the image is here. Here, it's the black mountains in the background and showing them in situ as they sit in the landscape. And of course, the other interest in this photo is coming from the wonderful colours in the sky. But it's the shape of the hills that's most important here. So I've made sure that they're sitting in the middle of the frame and that the landscape around them isn't detracting from their silhouettes. After this particular shot, I set off to find the Cowley Peak lookout point, which I'd not had the chance to see before. I have a bit of a chequered history with this place. I've tried to come here a couple of times, but some things always stopped me from doing it. The last time I came up, um, everything was perfect until about five minutes from when I actually wanted to shoot, and then the heavens opened and the rain was appalling. So this time, 
I'm really pleased to be able to get the, the couple of shots that I've got. And if I manage to do it in time, there's another shot that I've just seen here. There's another exposure here. But there is something about uh, this place that I've been trying to find for quite some time. And to be honest, I haven't done it because I don't really like getting out the car and walking a lot. Um, but somewhere, around here somewhere, there's a little sticky, uppy, rocky bit, which if you were in the Lake District, you'd probably call a, um, a tarn, perhaps? I don't know. Uh, Chris Sale, no. I'm not Chris Sale. So, uh, uh, yes, I'm going to try and find that, and I think that there's a picture with that in the foreground. And that is your foreground interest, and then in the background, all of this lovely Gloucestershire landscape. So uh, that's the next thing. But there's steps going down, and I need to pay attention to those first. And this is the shot that I wanted to get. What I've got here in uh, the foreground, uh, if you can see uh, just here, this is uh, the uh, the peak. That's the bit that everybody comes up here to see. And um, that's the bit that there's plenty of people here at the moment who are taking, who are uh, sort of looking, looking at the thing as well. In the background, we have Gloucestershire. Um, the wetland centre uh, is right the way up there. We've got May Hill on the right hand side and then there's the mountains in, in the background and it, the light is perfect tonight. It's absolutely perfect. So two things. Firstly, I'm going to bracket this shot so that we get everything bracketed. We can do that right now. Uh, let's just stop this, turn this on to bracket. Now positioning wise, I've got the the thing, don't know what to call it, the peak in, <laughs> uh, in the bottom right hand qu quadrant of the photo um, and that is giving me some foreground interest but at the same time it's giving me um, uh, something on the roll of thirds as well which kind of fits. Uh, I will lock this off so that everything is absolutely perfect. Um, All right, we're just about there. We're going at a shutter speed of 20, f8, 160 ISO. Uh, we're bracketing this, like I said, so there's plenty of room to maneuver in the background. I'm focused uh, on the foreground here. Uh, so I've got enough uh, forward focus to, to be able to do something with that, to be able to blend focal point if I need to. Uh, and I'll do this three times. So nearest focus first. Then the actual thing itself. And finally on the background. <laughs> Just as two people wander into shot. The uh, vagaries of doing photography when there are people around. Ah well, I'll just have to wait and see if I can get it before the sun goes. I stood around waiting for some time, but I eventually got this picture. Now, there were still people in the frame, but no one had wandered right into frame again, and I only had the heads in the final image. Those were easy enough to clone out, so that's what I did. This was the image that I'd come to take that night, and I wasn't really expecting anything more to come of the evening. But I had seen a possible exposure earlier in the evening, and I just had time to stop and take a look at that. Now this is the final thing for tonight. Uh, I've got my camera set up. I'm in portrait mode again. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing a panorama in portrait mode. Well, um, this is something that I figured out when I was back doing sort of web design and, and, and that sort of design work. That if you have an image which, is, you know, the longest side of an image is the the side that you want to treat as the shortest side of a bigger image. It does make sense, I promise. So look, think about it like this. If I took a panorama and my camera was landscape, then the tallest it would ever be is the, the tallest that the, the top and bottom could be. But if I turn it up the other way around, there's more picture of the other way. Do you see what I'm saying? Honestly, it does work. Anyway, so I'm I'm waiting for the sun to set right now, for the sun to actually go down. You've got some beautiful, beautiful colours in the sky. I think we're going to miss an awful lot of that. Because what I'm, what I'm doing, and let me see if I can just turn this on to record. What 
because what I'm doing here, you see, is I am taking um, a, a really sort of tiny part of the uh, of the landscape. This is only a small part of the landscape, but I'm going to get something which goes all the way around here and should get in uh, May Hill, which is over there. The mountains I've been thinking are the Malvern Hills. They're not the Malvern Hills. The Malvern Hills are over that way. The mountains that are over there are the Black Mountains in Wales and the sun is going to set right behind them. So that's the thing that I want to be focusing on. Anyway, uh, th so this panorama is gonna be a, a big one. It's gonna go all the way across there. That gives me two options when I get back into the computer. First of all, I can do a big panorama and I can print a big panorama if that's what I want to do. But the second thing, almost as important, is that I can create the big panorama and then chop it up into little bits and each little bit is a different picture. Now that's a good tip if you're doing social media with your pictures but you, you're not producing enough pictures to do let's say 10 a month which is roughly where you need to be if you're doing posts on social media. 10 a month is kind of the, the kind of the minimum that you want to try and be doing. If you're not taking 10 photos a month that can be a problem. So doing something like this where you know you're spending the time doing a photo actually um, uh, taking one photo and chopping it up, not a bad idea at all. Anyway, let's get this back on. We're bracketing again, because why not? Uh, and I'm going to put this in what will be the starting position. You can see the sun right there. Now I'm going to also, we will focus now, so I don't have to focus later. Uh, we're going to take this right to the edge of the picture. I want to start off there. There is this beautiful, beautiful mist over there, which I'm sure will disappear as soon as I try and put dehaze on. So I might not put dehaze on this thing. And I'm just waiting for that sun to fall. It's coming down uh, right now. As for time, right at the moment, sunset started at six at uh, eight o'clock. It's now just about half past. So. I'm hoping that we'll see that sort of fall in the next 10 minutes or so. This is that moment where the sun sort of sinks into the uh, into the, the, the sea. See? That's not right. Behind the mountains in this case. Um, let's see what we can get. All I've got to do now is just wait for this sun. And in many respects it's infuriating because you really just want to take that shot. But in other respects, there aren't many better jobs than this, you know. There aren't many better things to do of an evening, standing in the middle of, of the countryside with a stunning, stunning vista in front of you. And that beautiful golden light at the end of the day it is just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Right, I'm gonna wait here for a bit and then we'll see how this turns out uh, when we actually get back into the edit. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video and I hope you enjoy looking at the picture that you get next. This is the final image and this is why it's worth waiting for that sun. I am so thrilled with this photo, not least because I very nearly didn't make this trip. But this almost brings us full circle. It had been a day of panoramas and the following day was going to be another one and actually you'll see that in next week's video. And whilst I thought the sunset shots were truly beautiful and I'd finally got my classic Cowley Peak image, the first panorama of the day was actually my favourite. Here it is, and I just love the way that that sky looks here, and you can see the glow of the sunset on the horizon. It's only a shame that I didn't have quite the right bracket for taking panoramas. And that's something I'm going to have to leave for another video. Anyway, this was a fantastic trip to somewhere that's not actually that far away from me, and I hope you've enjoyed it. In the next video, I head to Wales again for another panorama shot. If you don't want to miss out on that one, please hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell icon, and select the all notifications uh, box that comes up. And also, please do share these videos around if you want to help the channel out. That's the best way to do it. That's it from me for this video, however. But as always, I want to leave you with this little reminder, keep taking those shots.